We can't continue to allow China to rape our country. Toys, electronics, the last 20 years, the standard has been set by the label made in China. But new categories are starting to dominate the global market and it's causing discomfort. But wait, before we even get into the video, you have to know this. It's important to know about an economic principle called the principle of comparative advantage. It's when country A can make goods cheaper because of reasons like low cost operations, that's their advantage and they should sell it to the world. Country B should find their own comparative advantage in goods that they can make better. OK, let's go. They 让你好好的工作，让你汽车行业，让你要加班加点，让你他很烦人。这影响我的生活质量。每个人喷不相信你的制度比我更优越，不相信你的人比我更聪明，不相信你的教育比我更灵光。这实际上就证明他们以前对中
or if a European country did this, they would be the king, the hero of the world that saves us all, that saves our lungs and helps us breathe better. But because it's China, it's not just steel, also with solar panels. China produced 217 gigawatts of solar panels in 2023. That's more than the US has ever built in its entire history. China do what they say they are going to do. It's just one thing that you need to remember that Xi Jinping said a while ago. Green mountains and clear waters are gold and silver. So China is focusing on the pollution that's going on in China and it's doing what they said they will do. They are making the lives better for everyone here and they are producing quality stuff. I mean, the US is just complaining because listen to this. Just now in April, the US Secretary of Treasury came to Beijing, China, and she said that China is too large for the world to absorb this capacity that China is producing. Literally, while she was in Beijing, she asked the PRC, the People's Republic of China, to take action because the prices are too low in China. She claimed that China makes too many EVs, solar panels and lithium batteries than China's domestic market can even absorb. Wait, in an era of economic globalization, the demand and then development potential is an indicator to see if there's overcapacity, right? So imbalance is a common place. China has 1.4 billion people. They know the law of value. It's like everything happened together because one week later, the German Chancellor came to China to open his case for open and fair markets. But the, <laughs> the thing that made me laugh here is I want you to check how scary China makes it when these big people come to visit China. I mean, if you go to Europe, go to the US, it's just normal, right? But when people come to China, China really show its power. Like it's always these military people standing there with their guns. I feel like if I was a president from another country coming to China, it's like going to the principal's office. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like China is just showing its power and be like, I'm not doing anything, but you know that we are the strong ones, we are the powerful ones, so be careful what you want to say, especially when you're coming to my country. As China exports, the world loses jobs. That is the biggest problem now that the world is facing, not China, the rest of the world. But is it China's fault that they found ways to make ways cheaper? Maybe the other countries should focus more on proving their own country's good, right? Like focus on how to make their products cheaper, how to make the production of stuff cheaper. Stop focusing on others. Yes, it's sad that the world is losing jobs, but it's not China's fault because, you know, China found ways how to make cheaper stuff, better things than the rest of the world, and now everyone is using it. Like talking about jobs, the US lost 5 million jobs because of China. Mm, no, I don't think that's the truth. That's what they said, right? So what, next they're going to blame China for their homeless people, their drug abuse? No, let's look at the numbers. In 1950, 30% of the US workforce was in manufacturing. In the 2000s, this is before China even joined the WTO, it already halved to 15% of the US workforce now in manufacturing. And then, came what they call the China shock. After China joined the WTO in 2010, 9% of the US workforce was now in manufacturing. So they call it the China shock, but as people say, this just accelerated the process. It anyway would have happened. This would have maybe taken 20 years, but now because of China, it just took 10 years. So it's not China's fault. I mean, they're talking about shocks, right? The China shock. I kind of like that word. But the second shock, they said, will be even larger. And that is what's making the other countries panic. But why? Why will the second shock be larger? And why is China so much in the lead? 
uh, because China has 30% shares in the global market. Second, cheap wages. Third, advantage of technology capacity. And last, maybe the biggest one, state support. But I think the biggest thing that we want to talk about today while I'm giving you all this information is, is it China's fault? I'm serious. Like, can you blame China for making their own country better, for focusing on stuff rather than focusing on what other countries are not doing or doing? Because that is what the world is doing. Oh, that's the biggest bug I've ever seen in my life. Right? China is not to blame for any of this. The world cannot take it. Like I heard this Chinese guy saying at the beginning of the video, it's true, the Frenchmen or most European countries, they're just lazy and now China's making them work harder. By the way, that's not a homeless person. That's a person that's just picking up the trash, picking up boxes actually and makes money from it. That you call being productive. But anyway, because now the European countries suddenly have to start working because if they don't, they're just going to lose more and more jobs because China's taking over. And well, for the US, they just are very biased and hate China. So anything that China does better than them, they just find a problem. Like, oh, China cannot be better than us. China has a problem with overcapacity. So let's blame them for that. As I'm walking here on this hot day, and we're talking about this hot topic, let me end with this. The biggest benefit of globalization is the USA. They've made a lot of money in China, pots of money actually, but they haven't shared these profits with their own people. So to hide that, now they are blaming China. I would really like to hear your thoughts on this topic today about this overcapacity. And I just think it's a load of poo. Really, there's no other word for it. Like, look at this economic principle we talked about. Like, China's just doing better than everyone else. Why on earth would you blame China for overcapacity? And as always, I'm always learning something and it's always interesting for me to make. But yeah, let me know what you think about this. And yeah, thanks for watching everyone. And I'll see you in the next video from a very hot day in China. Summer is here. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.